This is a music-free revised version of one of my older videos. It contains more content information, better explanations, as well as updated resources that can be found in my description box below my video. Please enjoy. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie, keeper of my home. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a rag rug. This is something that you can do that is a really cool idea that I've been doing for a long time and my grandmother used to do this as well. Uh, these are some sheets that I no longer use. I've had them, as you can see by the print, years. I have a tote that I just put them in there. Uh, some I just pick up and grab from Goodwill stores, uh, wash them with the intention of using them for this purpose. You know, sometimes you have sheets that are worn, sometimes you have that are faded, uh, that maybe the top sheet or the bottom sheet is missing. It does require crocheting, but it's easy. Um, there's a lot of uh, videos that will show you step by step, so if you are not a crocheter, it is very simple to learn. So just go on uh, and uh, you can figure that out because I guarantee you're going to love this rag rug. It's just so soft on your feet, so cushiony. As far as print on your sheets, it's not going to matter because honestly, like on this one, you're not even going to notice that these are big uh, roses or you know flowers even. You're just going to see color and that's all I want is a pop of color. And this one, you're not going to know that it has butterflies and grass on it and daisies because all you're going to see is the color. All you're going for is color. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, so I'm going to take this one out here. And as far as how many sheets you want to use, I don't have uh, an answer for that one. I just guesstimate. Even if I don't have enough, um, I'll just add to it and keep adding to it until I do have enough. And I mean, it's not, it's, it's very forgiving. But you'll see on the end of this sheet, it has a little bit of trim. I'm going to cut that trim off because we are not going to be using it. So you can just make a slit in the fabric and it pulls off that simple. So from the top of the sheet or the bottom, whichever place you want to start, I'm going to measure I like to do about two inches. So I'm going to put a dot every two inches. Okay, that's going to get me started. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slit next to every single one of those dots that I made. I'll leave a link in my description box below the video for how to cut your sheet in one continuous strip for anyone interested in using that method. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it. Okay, when you get down to the end, there's a little hem on the bottom. Just cut, that's all. You're just going to throw these in a little pile and you're going to keep going and keep going and keep going. To make these rugs, you can also use scrap fabric, curtains, tablecloths, old clothing, or even wool. This is really not, you know, definitely not a quick process. I mean, in the end it is. This, this part of it is long. Probably the worst part of it is doing all the prep work. Making the actual rug takes no time at all. It's very quick and very easy. So you, you see all these strings? That's okay because we're going to get rid of those too. If you want to tear up all the sheets, you can go ahead and tear up all the sheets all at once. You can put these all in your stockpile. Or you can do part of the sheet, just do it as you go along and decide what you want to do from there. Um, maybe you want to use more, so you want to cut more sheets. Maybe you want to add another sheet color. Uh, Goodwill has a lot of sheets. You can also use the fitted sheet to make this rug. You just have to remove the elastics on each corner to make it easier to cut into strips. Okay, so I finished tearing the sheets. Now this is what you have. 
a lot of strips. So what do you do with these strips? So I separate the colors and you can see <laughs> it, it does look like a mess, but it's, it won't be when we're done. I promise. Okay. And like I said, it takes more time to do the prep work than it does the actual rug, but it's worth it. I promise it's worth it. So we're going to separate the colors. And as I'm separating, I'm also peeling off these stray strings here. The threads can also be removed as you're tearing your strips. I just don't because when I get into tearing, I just want to tear them all, get them all done and not have to stop and delay myself by peeling off all the threads. I like to do that later when I'm separating all the colors. These rugs really make such great gifts. They're great Christmas gifts. They're great birthday gifts. I usually make one every year for someone. Um, I don't put them in high traffic areas. I do keep them in low key areas. This is a revised version of the first video I made with this content. And on the first video that I made, I got a lot of comments regarding this being a trip hazard. If you put a non-skid pad on the underside of it, you should be fine. And I also do not put them in high traffic areas. So that eliminates a lot of the hazard as well. I like to keep them in my bedroom or in a closet. I have a walk-in closet. I like to keep them in there by the sink in your kitchen. Uh, they make really good little moments for your feet to enjoy. Okay, so now we have all of our piles of fabric. I've got them all cut into strips. They're two inch strips with five different colors. Now what we need to do is to connect them together. To do that, I have a no sew method of doing this. Uh, it's real quick, real easy, and I'm gonna bring you in closer so you can really get an idea of what I'm doing. So I have this fabric. I'm going to fold this over about an inch. I'm going to make a little cut. It's going to look like that, kind of like a buttonhole. I'm going to do the same thing with another piece of fabric. So you're going to fold it over about an inch. You're going to take the scissors, make a slit right here. So this is what you have. Now you're going to take these two pieces, place one on top of the other so that the holes match up. And whichever piece you have on top, you want to find the other end of it. And you want to bring it up through, bring that piece up through from the bottom into the hole. And you want to pull it all the way through. and that joins it. No sew, but it's joined. So, and this just weaves right in with your crocheting. And then you continue on, you find the other end, you fold it over again, about an inch, you make a cut, it's like a buttonhole, and then you add your next piece. I think I'll do this color here. You're going to fold this over about an inch. You're going to make a small slit. Open that up. There's your slip. You're going to place that on top of the other one so that the holes match up. And whatever fabric is on the top, you're going to find the other end. And you're going to bring it up through from the bottom in through the hole and pull it all the way through and you've joined another piece. You're going to continue doing this. Whatever color you want to do, the next color can be however you want to do it. You could do the, another one of the same color if you want to. It doesn't make any difference. It's up to you. Um, I will tell you that these pieces seem long, but once they're crocheted up, they aren't going to be long at all. I've had a number of people ask me how many sheets I used for this particular rug that I made. I did cut up five sheets, four full size and one twin. 
I didn't use them all to make the rug. I used about three full sheets and a half of a twin. Really, it's, it's up to you what you want to use because it's up to you the size you want to make. The bigger the rug you make, the more strips you're going to use. You can use all different colors or you can use all one color, monochromatic if you want to. Whatever you choose to do, whatever design, whatever style, whatever fabric, it's all up to you. You're going to have stray strings here and there, but that's okay. I've gotten the majority of them off. They'll just weave right in and you won't notice them. As you go, if you'd like, you can start rolling your beginning piece into a ball. Just like rolling a ball of yarn. I do like to keep the fabric strip straight when I'm forming my ball and that helps keep it from any tangling later on when I'm ready to crochet the rug. Doesn't look like much of a ball right now, but it will turn into one as we go along. This just makes it easier than doing it all at once. I just kind of do a few strips, connect a few, and then I start rolling to catch up. And then I connect a few and roll a little. Okay, this is going to form a very large ball. I'm going to say it's going to get about this big around. And like I said, this is the most work that you're going to have to do, is doing all of this. Um, once that ball is rolled, you can start crocheting, and it's going to be an easy thing from there on out, I promise. Very, very easy, and you're going to love the end result. Don't worry whether or not you have enough fabric in the fabric ball that you're rolling. You can always add more fabric to your project. If you come to the very end and you decide I want a bigger rug, I don't have any more fabric left on my ball, that's okay. You can add it. Just take your last strip that you crocheted into your rug and use the same joining technique that we used here. All you have to do is do another strip, join it on there, add the strips as you're crocheting. But this is a very forgiving project. Don't make it any harder than it than it has to be because I'm, I'm telling you it really is very simple and I've said before this is going to be the most work that you do. After this you're just going to be sitting and crocheting this. It, it, it'll work up so easy and if you want to you can always as you collect your fabric as you collect your sheets just start cutting them into strips. You can use a rotary cutter um, on a you know quilt mat. You can tear the fabric. I find that easier, quicker for me. Um, however you want. Take scissors. Cut it if you want to use scissors and, and just cut it that way. To save time, cut your strips as you go and store them in a big tote so you're all set up when you're ready to make a new rug. This is what I did with the fabric. I rolled it into a giant ball. Um, I had four different sheets, I believe, and I've used, I still haven't used all of the sheets, so there's still more of the sheets left. So you can see, this is turning out to be a very long rug, but it is the cushiest, softest rug ever. Um, you just stand on it and you can, you just feel yourself, it's like a cushion. I have got this much done. It's pretty, it's very soft colors, be cute for a little girl's room. And I have lots of granddaughters. So I'm just, like I said, crocheting. I'm not gonna teach you how to do that. There's lots of people who do this and they will do a much better job, I'm sure, than I can at teaching you. So once you learn how to crochet, this will work up so fast and I think that's what I like about it so well because I do knit well I know how to knit I don't knit I know how uh, it's not something that I like because it doesn't work out fast enough for me I like instant results sad but true I know I've said this before but this is what I call a mindless activity kind of like folding the laundry doing the dishes those kind of things you just don't have to pay real close attention to what you're doing, but it gets done. 
I like those kind of things. This is something you can do while you're watching TV. You can do it while you're saying your prayers. It doesn't take a lot of effort to do this or a lot of skill. Crocheting is extremely easy. This is a single crochet stitch that I'm using and that is the most basic of stitches. So try this. I encourage you to try something new. It's not only a great thing that you will have as, as you know the end result, but it's good for your brain to try new things. For washing instructions on this rug, I machine wash in cold water and I always lay flat to dry. You can put it in the dryer. It's not going to hurt it. If it's old cotton, it's not going to shrink it anymore. I like to lay it flat to dry because I don't want to risk pulling out more of the threads and having it fray. So that's why I lay it flat to dry. I think it definitely extends the life on it. And I don't wash it often because I keep it in a low traffic area. I like to pick it up and give it a good shake a couple of times a week when I do my vacuuming. And really, that's all I do with it. If this is something you're enjoying and you would like to see me make an oval one or a round one, or even one made of yarn, let me know in the comment section below. This is a rug that I did about 13 years ago. It does look worn and it does look frayed, but it's 13 years old. And I think the condition that it's in speaks for itself pretty darn good. It holds together. It, it, you know, it holds together really well. It has not come unraveled and you do see a little bit of fraying. And I've had a lot of people ask me, will it fray if I wash it? Yes, it's going to fray if you wash it, but it'll stop fraying over time as much. I don't wash mine often because I keep it in low traffic areas. I don't put it where it's going to be in a really high traffic, uh, walked in area and I just give it a good shake a couple of times a week whenever I vacuum and it's stayed pretty well. You can see it does have some fraying. You see a little bit of fraying there. I mean if you want to you can trim that up when you take it out. Uh, if that's too much upkeep for you, you know what? This is the look and the character that you're gonna get and I love that. I love that look, that character. Um, it just kind of fits in with what it is. It's a rag rug. This is another rug that I've done, and this one is done using yarn. Um, I crocheted this with several strands of yarn at a time, and you can see this one is old. This one's quite old, older than my rag rug, but it's held up really well, and I just put a fringe edge and um, these were just colors of yarn that I had in my scrap bin and it's held together really well. It's a real strong crochet and I can't remember it right now what um, size needle I used but if this is something that you would like to see me do let me know in the comments below. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. If you're currently subscribed to my channel, be sure that when you click the bell, it says all. That way you'll be sure to receive notification anytime I post new videos. This truly is one of the softest, most cushioniest rugs I've ever stood on. And I promise if you make one of these, your feet are going to love you.